you know, my theory is that Ben is Jesus. In the original pilot, he was written very much as a carpenter, and his name is Ben, which in Arabic, Bin means son of. It's all right there. I don't think the kings would even realize they've written it. You don't have to believe in the supernatural to know that there are people out there who do bad things and encourage others to do bad things for the sheer pleasure of it. Do you need to believe in the supernatural to believe things like confession are what can get you past evil? Put your faith in God. Even if you don't believe the underpinnings of religion, are some of the processes and structures valuable on a psychological level? Michelle is always baffled. She will ask me, you believe in the devil then? And I said, yeah. I mean, I don't think he looks like we all think he looks like but I think he's there because I believe in a supernatural presence to him. We enjoy horror. We enjoy embracing the genres. They make it our shows less pretentious because if we our thoughts were really spilled out on the page in essays, it would be the most pretentious thing you'd ever read. So what are we looking at? A psychological assessment and a spiritual one. We are kind of like the Trinity, the three of us, like David feels like he's always looking to the heavens. Kristen is always looking at the human and, and Ben is kind of planted into the earth. There's a chance this is environmental. The fact that we are able to have this debate amongst ourselves as characters and still work together and still genuinely care for and appreciate the other person's point of view is something profound and it invites that kind of same dynamic among people who are watching. It's fun to be that guy who sort of goes, you know, uh, guys, have you ever thought about just the obvious answer to this? You know, could be the air conditioner. Every time Ben comes up with the scientific explanation, she's like, high five, you know, let's move on. You killed Santa Claus for her. She finds him very amusing and I think he probably has a bit of a crush on her which I read in an interview with the Kings so I was like oh right and I sent it to Asif I was like did you know and he's like of course I knew <laughs> David if we ever get in the way of your job here you tell us right it's never gonna happen she's moved by David because he genuinely wants to be a good person like he's going to marry the freaking church just to do good like who who does that? I think it's a bit of a forbidden fruit on both sides, perhaps. She's married, she has four children. He's a man of the cloth. And then he's this beautiful man, and he's witty and smart. It's a physical attraction, it's an intellectual attraction, it's a mutual respect. And I think they like touching hot items and seeing how long they keep their hands on it. It is a game they play. They're kind of perfect for each other, but it's totally not going to happen. The way that she looks herself in the mirror is kind of like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, she still doesn't believe it, but it's, it's intriguing. Now, what are we talking about here? Shoplifting? I killed someone. He doesn't think she's capable of murder. He knows her. He knows her personally. He knows her certainly outside of the office, outside of the, the therapy. She did what she did, and I think she would do it again. I think she did the right thing. As a mother, this guy was a serial killer. He had it out for her daughters. He thinks she's either deluded or something since she started working with this church, this church. She doesn't seem to be a victim of this act. She also seems to be weirdly put in her power by it. She now knows that she can just take these guys out. The way you're telling me this, you don't seem bothered. I'm not, I am, I'm glad he's dead. Perhaps the problem is she isn't struggling enough. I don't think he's on to her in the sense of like, she's evil or she has something going on. Maybe she's in trouble, but in that regard, all of them are in trouble. She is, I think, looking at herself saying, huh, what, why, why is this not more problematic for me? And I think that's kind of in the back of her mind when she's talking to Michael Emerson, for instance, to Leland, she's just like, you don't know half of it. You don't know what I could do. You You're no more evil than... No more evil than what? You? I think he knows that she's not the same girl we met at the beginning of season one. Things are changing. The things she's willing to do, the lines she's willing to cross. We're in uncharted territory with our dear Kristen now. What's that going to lead to? Flee, <laughs> fans of enemies! Saint Michael the Archangel! He does a lot of things in the spirit of just messing with people's minds. There seems to be some gamesmanship about it. it it's like, exercise me if you can, but I doubt it. Well, look, it's a party. I think David has a bit of a hero complex. I think there's some parts of him that 
like the challenge. I think there's a certain part of him that's getting a high and a rush off of having a relationship with God, contact with God, visions, and he feels like there's something bigger than him that he can devote his life to. Your visions are hell, not heaven. People in the first season was something out there. And season two, it's something inside. It's inside the church itself and it's inside Kristen and inside her daughters too. I think we all knew Maddie was going to bite the dentist. Us four all knew that was going to happen. But when she did it, I screamed. I feel like all the daughters are going to be possessed. I have a theory that I think that Leland could is your dad. Yeah. Your mother and I know each other. Because the show is genuinely scary, I think it was important to counterbalance that with a very loving and warm home life. I wish I was their real mommy, but I'll settle for being their TV mommy. <laughs> First of all, they're great improvisers, right? They give us three lines and then it's up to one of us to like improvise I, something. No. I'm not even scared. <laughs> I'm, not I'm a bit. They basically know what kind of lines they should have, but they improvise around it. We work with this, our script supervisor, Mel, and she would help us kind of navigate that all. We'll do like rock, paper, scissors over a line. Then Mel will like be like, all right, there's one line that one of you guys doesn't get. Who wants to add something in? And we'll all like be like, what if I said this? They can talk over each other all day, every day. I do not care. I love these children. Anything can happen. I remember times, you know, Dolly <laughs> on the floor or like Brooklyn hits Dolly in the face. Or, like, oh, that was fun. Even off camera when they're together, they're just like, blah, 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 blah. it's like a cacophony of sound, you know? We're not even acting. It just comes so natural. We we all just connect really easily. Sometimes I think we don't even tell them the camera's on. Like, just let them, let it just go. Oh, no. oh, wait, everybody everybody, everybody, everybody out. Well, well, you guys well, well, you well, take us on your little expeditions. Well, we never even I can watch it if you want. Everybody in? I had so much fun filming that episode. I feel like that was one of the first episodes this season that we felt more submerged into that, into the world of all of the evil. For me, it was fun because the, it was the first time you see Ben really fall apart. Up until that point, I don't think you've ever seen Ben really lose it. And he really thinks he's gonna die. I like how Kristen kind of takes them and just makes it a good time. And these kids come home and they've had a great time. And they're just like, our mom's so cool. Like she's fighting demons. They grew up around people that wanted to like, just run into the scary instead of back away from it. Ah, hell, here we come. She could think like, well, that's irresponsible. But I don't think it's irresponsible because she doesn't believe. Obviously there's not an elevator to hell. Like, come on, that doesn't exist. Spare us, Save oh Lord. Me, it's hard physical work. A, a lot of groaning and crying out, some vomiting of things and uh, wrestling with teams of priests who are holding me down. <sighs> How am I doing? You, you see guys in black suits and white collars and you think, oh, these... <laughs> These are all actors, but so, sometimes there's a guy there that's dressed like that, and he's really a priest. <laughs> I'm kind of afraid of him. Some days I feel like, oh, this undertaking, the, the scenes I'm in, they're often really blasphemous. Jesus looks unhappy. I just feel like, oh, I need to stay away from, you know, the, the serious worldly power of the church uh, for fear that they will punish me in some way. <laughs> the world is getting worse because evil is no longer isolated. Bad people are talking to each other. The last few years, there was so much that was baffling about our country, but about the world. There was something almost viral about how evil acts were happening. That wasn't something you could address on Good Fight or Good Wife. That was something more, almost like an illness. In The Good Fight, they do it through the lens of this law firm. And in Evil, they do it through the lens of, of a horror show. We really take on a lot of relevant political, sociological issues. It's just speaks of current events and then and then throws it into this king's universe which is so thrilling and exciting and weird and also to like sort of mine in comedy there's a line that ben has when he's dealing with the with the succubus why do you have a retainer that's the kind of thing that they infuse there'll just be these moments of like absurdity that you know exist hi george is the name Good to meet you. <gasps> Their shows are always smart. They go off in all sorts of dangerous, kind of risky directions. So the mental health aspect of it, I think is really, really necessary for today because so much of our chaos 
has to do with the lack of attention to mental health. First incision will be at the jawline. We keep telling in the writers and we're that parallel tracks, we need to know that it could happen psychologically. We could know that it happened supernaturally. If you suddenly said things were all supernatural, I think you wouldn't be able to look into, you know, the bias against uh, African-Americans in the health system, you know, because suddenly, oh, well, that's just the devil. The devil made them do it. So I think that's why it's a good idea to have both. Most black patients die in hospitals from accidents. I don't think we overtly tackle too many racial issues because it's just, you know, that's not necessarily what the show is. It, it you know, inherently becomes that because I am, I'm part of the show and we live in America and that's just the way it is. We're dealing with a reality, not something that we make up. We put in just enough of that, you know, spice just to sort of make people understand that we are, yes, we are here in the real world and we're not uh, ignoring all the things that you guys see. For the room, it's always a struggle. Like what is the uh, ghost story metaphor for the thing we want to explore? It wasn't until we started editing and re-editing that we learned we were gonna be on Paramount Plus. It's been fun to push the envelope in the later stages of the, of the process. I think we were always maybe a streaming show, like just posing as a network show, so. This is the last show on earth you would think would be on CBS. I think it'll be a better show. You know, we're not gonna become the F-bomb heavy show. You know, it's not that, but we'll just be a little more, you know, grounded. I think Kristen should be allowed to say f after, you know, the things that she goes through. Sometimes f is the most, is the best word to get a point across. I guess it was, it was sort of an afterthought, like, oh, shit, we got to add some f's. <laughs> I got like a sheet of like, s swear word of choice, and I could just pick, and I just spent like two hours just doing like, f shit. I thought I was going to go with like, mother f you know what I mean? I thought I was going to go with that, and I ended up going with shit. <laughs> but, and then I was disappointed because I was like, shit, ah, all right, I guess that's what we're doing. If, if David drops an F-bomb, it's, it's David the priest dropping an F-bomb. So it, it will, if, if it makes sense, sure. If David loses composure to that point, sure. Can I buy you a drink? Sure. It's a season about the temptation of sex too, and being able to use sex and the reality of sex is a good tool. Sometimes they shot an edgier version so we're now able to open those gates a bit. They pretend to be normal, but their real pursuit is evil. Evil is a show that makes you understand yourself or your own motivations as a person a little more intricately. It just makes you question certain aspects of your life and things that you've felt comfortable with. That's a scary place to be because most of the stuff that happens in the world and most of the stuff that we feel is all in our head. People put a mirror up to that. It's a frightening thing. <laughs> <laughs> Was that scary enough for you? You know, maybe the optimism is that there are people that care about evil, that actually recognize it and want to address it, whether it comes from a place of religion or a place of psychology. I mean, that is one thing that all the characters are in agreement about, that evil exists in the world and you need to address it. I think that's optimistic.